What is going on? You are listening to Tag's podcast, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the podcast, the OG sex positive podcast. This is episode 422. I'm your host, Stevie, alongside Jeremy Ross Lopez. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm good. How are you? Doing really good here. Really good. Of course, also joining us is Cody Marie Stoggett. How the hell you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. I'm, I'm in a beautiful evening. Got my wine and I'm ready to go. Hey, I got a nice glass here too. So I'm enjoying it. Well, we have a full show for you, but I could not help but talk about this past weekend. Jeremy in the city. I feel like it was sex in the city practically. <laughs> Jeremy came back to New York City and we were reunited. And how much fun did we have? We had a blast. And I forgot how fun nightlife and just being in the city walking around and stuff is plus you picked a great time of year christmas where the lights it's so festive you know i learned something from you about social media jeremy has this really cool way of like we went to we're going to talk about a couple of the things that we did but we went to a really cool exhibit and then we went out to a really cool hotel brand new club but i just decided the next day kind of in a lazy mode with social media to just dump it all in a post and mm-hmm. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. and say some fun stuff I, jeremy actually takes inspiration moments you know that you do that right yes i definitely and it could do. be from a high rise mirror from the bathroom of a cool hotel looking down at some beautiful lights to maybe there's a picture of him here. And I noticed your friend Damaris does that too. And then you create, yeah, she does. You curate these really cool storylines that I'm like, I'm going to steal that from you and create my own versions of inspiring moments, but really cool on that. Yeah. I love that. it. Yeah, well, we do have to talk about particularly listeners who may be making their way over here to New York, Brooklyn, to be specific, to see Uh the Theory Mugler exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum. How phenomenal was that? It's literally like one of the best I've ever seen. And the fashion is just incredible. What I didn't realize, Cody, is Mm -hmm. that Thierry Mugler, who I've heard about throughout, you know, my lifetime as yeah. a prominent couture designer, I did not realize how many pop stars he's dressed throughout the years. We're talking Madonna, Cher, and may we say George Michael's Too Funky video with yeah. every high-end we're talking Naomi. I mean, yes. every model was in that in that '90s pret a porter moment, and he dressed all of them. Well, those fashions were all in this interactive, really cool, immersive exhibit. So it wasn't just like we were just looking at dresses. It was eight rooms and just one room really ignited your senses to the next and lady gaga i mean we could go on with all of the celebrities that he's dressed i did not know that and i think a lot of it was because we didn't have social media back in the day so and there were no credits to the too funky Mm -hmm. video but he dressed all these people did you know all that jeremy i did not i like guessed a few but i had no idea that it was like millions of celebrities yeah, absolutely. It started in Montreal, the exhibit. I didn't realize Thierry Mugler passed away earlier this year in January of 2022. Aww. Hopefully the exhibit will continue to go throughout the world because I think it's worth seeing it's that good. So okay. keep an eye yeah. out for that. And we just had fun going out as well, Jeremy, didn't you? Yeah, and so you and I, fun. yeah, you and I are kind of can be slugs on the couch for a little bit, but when we really pull it together, it was so much fun. So, definitely, yeah. So, kudos to that. All right. Well, we always want to shout out to those listeners that are pledging and supporting Tag's podcast, and I wanted to uh, shout out to Hector. 
Robles out in Mexico. Thank you so much for supporting Tag's podcast and joining our Patreon community. We really appreciate it. It really keeps the show moving forward, particularly as we go forward in 2023, because we've got a lot of surprises coming your way. But thank you, Hector, for joining it. And you too can support Tag's podcast by simply going to Patreon dot com forward slash tags podcast and just grab a grab a little tear over there it's worth it i guarantee it we'll make it worth your wild cody will i know he will <laughs> i'll do my best darling <laughs> yeah for a good time call jeremy of course as well too, so, yeah. <laughs> all right well we love following up on stories and last week cody and i were talking about indonesia's be- sex ban and if you remember on that episode it was bali in particular which is in in indonesia and everybody was freaking out because they said that there is a sex ban and it wasn't just to the gays it was just a sex ban in general so in other words if you're not in married you can somebody can turn you in and cody didn't they say a close it has to come from like a close family friend or a family member is what I remember from the story. They could turn you in. Yes. We're all people living in Indonesia. I know. Well, we couldn't help jump on that. And of course, every news outlet had to report on this because Bali, Jeremy, as you know, is such a destination spot for yogi people and just for bliss and i was like well i don't want to go there if that's the case well right. apparently the tourist board of indonesia got the fact that people like us and everybody else were talking about this and you know kaching kaching that yep. means people are not going to want to go there well apparently they came out and said it indonesia's sex ban will not affect tourists but queer community is still unsaved. Let me just read a little bit more. Indonesia's controversial sex laws will not affect foreign tourists visiting Bali, officials have confirmed. You know they had to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Quote, based on the provisions of the new Indonesian criminal code, visitors who visit or live in Bali would not need to worry, said Balinese governor, the governor, adding that there would be no checks on marital statuses at tourist accommodations like hotels, villas, guest houses, spas, or inspections by public officials or community groups. Like most major tourist hotspots around the world, they did suffer Bali, vast economic turmoil during COVID, and returning to its place in tourism land has been a little tough battle. This obviously... It didn't sit well. And I love how they had to come back and say, oh, gays and tourists, don't worry about that. You're you're okay. But it kind of brings up a larger issue with (laughs) travel. And, you know, we all heard about Brittany Griner being released back Mm -hmm. home. Thank God. Thank you. I was watching a show today that was saying, you know, from a geopolitical standpoint of places you visit, you really need to be aware and kind of be your own advocate of yourself. Like you can't just willy nilly like travel anywhere and think that everything's going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Hello, did you watch White Lotus? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, all you got to do is watch that show to know that if you travel, you know, shit happens and no one wants to be caught in a foreign land. And particularly in our community, LGBTQ, does it make you a little concerned about travel, Jeremy, and doing your research before you head out? It definitely does. And I also just think like it, you, you want to be aware and alert, but when you're on vacation, you also want to just not have to think and like relax. And I feel like that alone would put me on edge, just knowing that in the back of my head, something could happen. Or if anything happened, just being able to like easily be arrested or held captive, just all of that is nerve wracking in general. Right. Absolutely. I just think, I mean, Cody, what are your thoughts on this? No, I totally agree with Jeremy. I think that when you do your due diligence beforehand, and that is how you alleviate some of that stress, I would 
I would never want to go somewhere and not be able to relax or not feel protected by that country's government to be able to live my life to the fullest. So I, I totally agree. Make sure that you feel safe at where, wherever you go and please do your, your research. The other thing is like you sometimes want to meet locals and have sex and like PDA and I don't know. It's just like it just sounds like it takes the fun out of the travel aspect of being there. Not that that's all the vacation is about, but it is nice to meet foreign people that you don't know and have a fling or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's a great piece that the advocate just put out called tracking 2022's lgbtq plus gains and losses across the globe i'm not going to go through it all because it's a lengthy list of places all around the world but it's worth checking out because it talks about places like argentina and lebanon and japan where court rulings have changed things on things like marriage and lgbtq rights and this is at least a good start to have, you know, bookmark this article before you start. I think a lot of us are really itching to get out and travel a more. And, you know, you might just want to really take note. The other thing I would say, too, is putting international travel aside for a moment we mm -hmm. also need to be our own advocate within our own city currently now i'm just not talking about where i live right. here in new york but just wherever you live i notice myself just based on what's going on with the bar scene being threatened you know all this stuff to our community recently i just have a little bit an awareness shield over me <laughs> that i almost say a little prayer before i go just to you know, be safe, be healthy, because I feel that anything could happen even within our own cities right now as well. Yeah, so definitely. I hear yeah. you. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, I know, Cody, you participated in this next story. It's called oh. the AI app that has, was causing a storm. <laughs> we sort of talked about this on a recent episode with Lincoln on episode 420. Of course, I remembered that one, Lincoln mm -hmm. and 420. <laughs> but it's the new AI app called Lens AI. And apparently, it can make you look you have to submit a bunch of pictures. I think it was 20. Is that what you did, Cody? About 20 yeah. images? I think it's 10 to 20, but I did as many as I could, definitely. Okay. <laughs> and it can set you back a little bit. Did you have to pay for this? Don't tell us how much if you don't want to, but did you have to pay? I did the free subscription to Lenza, and that lasts for about three or four days or what have you. And then it's like two ninety nine to get the AI computer images. And you get like a hundred of them to pick from. So okay. it's not too bad. Do you get to keep the ones that you originally got on the free version? Yes. You okay, get that you pay two ninety nine and you get a hundred pictures back for um, just the two ninety nine. Because wouldn't that suck if they just ripped those away from you and you just melted right? those pictures? Melted. I know. Well, apparently this is kind of, everybody was doing. I didn't even know because I don't really go on that much, but I did see yours, Cody. And I look good, right? You look really good. <laughs> People are looking like warriors, and some people even say better than they really look because it emphasizes certain features. Well, apparently some people are taking these work, quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, works of art, AI images and running to their plastic surgeons and asking to look like this. So oh, I know, <laughs> I think this is kind of sort of the downfall. The other thing that I didn't realize is there is a model out there that's really she's getting gigs she's black she's stunning she goes by the name shudu s-h-u-d-u -U. you can look her up shudu she's an ai generated image that is booking jobs and what? so it is happening she looks like you know no one really knew this i didn't know this until i found out it kind of reminded me jeremy of when we were, 
over the weekend, we were talking a lot about, oh, everything is like they're getting rid of people. You can't go to Whole Foods anymore. Yeah, they're it's just self checkout. Every, yeah. And are you concerned about this? And what are your thoughts on the AI lens app and plastic surgery? I'm like kind of creeped out by it a little bit, but I'm not like that concerned about it. I just think the whole thing is weird and it does make me just think of robots and all of that and the fact that <laughs> it is referenced as AI and it really didn't change people drastically. It looks like them with like no pores on their face and no imperfections really. It's almost mm. like if you got a portrait painting done of yourself but then downloaded it onto the computer and like photoshopped it a little bit. I mean, everyone's looked like them it was just a more exaggerated version or a much prettier version. But I don't think that it looks like a, Drag it me. Doesn't, it doesn't look like a whole different person. It looks like the people. It's just like, I don't believe that a plastic surgeon can really make you that version just because it's not living. Right. Generally. It's not real. Right. Yeah. Right. And I know Lincoln had some thoughts on this and you, Cody, definitely had some thoughts. You obviously did it. Look yeah. fabulous. I think you look fabulous Thank in real life, you. though. So because Lincoln's whole point, our other co-host, of course, said many of the people he was looking at look like glorified versions of themselves. And when you see them in person, they don't really look like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I think it's just a bit of fun, and I did it mainly to kind of see what the what I would look like as a superhero character. I did it more for the fantasy aspect of it. I didn't do it to kind of make myself look like a beautiful person because, like you said, I, well, you said it, but I'm going to reiterate it. I think I look pretty damn fabulous already, so I'm going to. I just did it for the fantasy aspect. I think that's perfectly fine. And I do, I hope people really aren't taking these to their plastic surgeon and saying, can I look like this? Cause that's just silly talk. And yeah. yeah. Shudu is gorgeous, by the way. I looked at her Instagram. Oh my yeah, goodness. She is. Of course she does. She's not real. It's like all the, <laughs> but Iman is still gorgeous at the age that Iman is today. And oh, she's real. So I'd rather look at, Iman in the same ads, knowing how fabulous she is. By the way, she you can see her in the Theory Mugler exhibit from back in the day, which is fabulous. But I just think I'd rather look at a real person any day. And yes, we all like a little filter and want to look our best selves. I think it's, I do understand your point. It's just harmless fun in many ways. I do think like a lot of things with social media, it can go down a darker path. So yeah. I just think finding that happy medium and what's healthy for you is always going to be the way. So, yeah, you know, I agree. none and of so this is good. By the way, you, oh, I was just going to lastly say none of this okay. is going away. You know, yeah. social media, AI. I agree with you. And some of them didn't even really look like me. So that is really where I drew the line. I That's why I picked so many because I knew that some of them weren't even going to be reminiscent of what I feel like I look like. So those I threw away and because they look too perfect, actually. I was like, I look nothing like that. And I don't have that idealized version of myself in my mind. So this is what I think I really look like. So I put that out there into the universe and I threw the rest away. I love it. All right. Well, we have to move on. And we don't talk a lot about politics unless it affects our community. And I couldn't help but talk about, ugh, I can't stand her, but we're going to talk about her. Marjorie Taylor Greene, representative. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm talking about it because she was recently at, giving a speech complaining to attendees at the Young Republicans Gala here actually in New York City that Amongst many things, she said, here's where we've come to. You can now purchase butt plugs and dildos at CVS and Target stores 
nationwide. Well, of course I heard butt plugs and dildos and I was like, what? <laughs> Where? I gave a Scooby-Doo kind of, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And she says, I don't even know how we got here. The adulterous QAnon queen is taking her cues as most brain dead lunatics do from Fox News as they continue the conversation over on Fox News over there. Well, after doing a little bit more research, because I was like, is this real? I can't imagine that it is. I went on CVS.com and looked up. Yes, you can actually. Let me read you what it is. Hello, cake, fuzzy butt, backside, rechargeable personal massager. <laughs> it's in a pink box with a green like one of those long butt plugs with the base. Mm -hmm. It's called a vibrating toy for backside play. They have other things like Hello Cake Stroker, double-sided men. Wow. They have Hello Cake Tush, Cush Backside, which is like a lube. Hello Cake Slow Low Men's Lotion, plus Ooh. one Kegel Trainer Pelvic. And they're all in these, I would say colorful boxes and i'll just read you a little bit it's the hello cake buzzy butt backside rechargeable personal massager has everyone eager to see what the buzz is all about our vibrating butt toy is made to last for hours of fun with its waterproof technology rechargeable battery and a carry-on size to go wherever you go customize your play with a selection of 10 unique vibration modes to give you the ultimate backdoor stimulation it goes on i can't believe that it's really a thing the one thing i was thinking about though is these days when you go to cvs i don't know when was the last time you guys went but everything because of theft is mm -hmm. in a glass case and you have to ask everyone to push a button to alert a clerk to come over to you could you imagine jeremy clicking that button and saying what do you want here and it's like i want that button. <laughs> <laughs> no on the positive night side of it all i did go on the website and my gps service on my laptop here says there are several in stock at the penn plaza cvs oh. on the corner of 8th avenue and 34th street so <laughs> oh, you should run there no worries yeah. for you. <laughs> and the last thing i'll say before you guys weigh in is that at $32.99, the buzzy butt comes in. We all know. So on the positive side of it, this could be a fun stocking stuffer, I think, for many of our, agree? For our community, I think. <laughs> on the flip side of it, did CVS and Target really, this company, it says a lot about it if we're getting to the point where now CVS and Target are carrying toys like this, but... I don't know, Jeremy, or don't you want to get your toys from the small mom and pop stores? I feel like it it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's if you want a toy, then buy a toy. And if you don't want it, no matter what store it's sold at, I don't really care. Yeah. So for me, <laughs> I mean, and things like that, that I don't want to buy at a store, I'd just buy online. Hmm. But I mean, if you need to go to CVS and buy it, I'm not one to judge no i think yeah what are your thoughts on that cody do you think making this a little bit more accessible because one of the things on there i could pick like right now if i put it in my basket mm -hmm. that sounds interesting but if i put it in my <laughs> basket i could go pick it up in the next like tomorrow morning yeah do you like this convenience for your sex toys what's your thoughts on this I mean, the sex stores in New York are open. I can go get one at four o'clock in the morning. I and I'll, I can also okay. get something in the back room. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. But yeah, I think it's really convenient. But for maybe Middle America, it would be it'd be nice if they could order something from CVS, some caked up from uh from CVS, and then <laughs> they can do their thing and have the enjoyment, so they won't be so pent up they won't have pent up frustrations and then they they can release some of that tension girl because that's what it's all about that's the name of the game absolutely i just think it also like i said it does i like where we're at if now we're seeing this at cvs and target maybe maybe the conversation about sex toys and all of this is not so taboo anymore and 
I think we're talking about this stuff more. I mean, when we started this, Jeremy, five years ago, we were really on a lone planet on sexuality. Yeah, now there's so many podcasts on that, and the conversation has shifted dramatically in five years. So it's a nice sign of the times I'm just going to go with, and I like it. So. And I would ring the bell with no shame. I would ring that bell and be like, excuse me, miss, I need this dildo right here, right now, please. Yeah, <laughs> I think I definitely, I remember a time and a place where I was panicked to buy condoms at the Safeway yeah. on Market Street near the Castro. And now I would be like, oh, yeah, no problem. Like, yeah. yeah. And did I tell you about my sex podcast? You know, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we don't care. Just get out of my face in here. Take it. <laughs> Take these condoms. <laughs> hey, guys, your buddy Stevie here and some good news and some bad news. Yes, summer is over. Good news is we got monkeypox under control. It's time to get back into the mix. And I'm talking about one of my favorite pastimes is to go to play parties or my favorite BDSM clubs. And when I go to those, I want to know that I can last as long as possible and have as much fun as possible, if you know what I mean. I definitely do not want to blow my load early on in the night. I want to be able to last as long as possible. And that's why I want to tell you about Roman Swipes, because they are so convenient over-the-counter wipes that are clinically proven to help you last longer in bed or at your favorite play party. They are uniquely formulated to reduce overstimulation without eliminating sensation altogether. And there's a 2019 study where they were proven to increase time to orgasm by more than four times. So to use, all you do is remove the disposable swipe from discrete pocket-sized packet. I carried it in my jeans, easy breezy, wipe on the most sensitive parts of your penis, and allow to dry for about five minutes. They're safe, effective, and no prescription is needed. When used as directed, Roman swipes leave no scent or taste, so there is no transfer to your sexy partner. Okay, I've got the perfect deal for you. Try swipes today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order. Just go to Row dot co slash tags t-a-g-s today that's r-o dot c-o slash t-a-g-s for 20 percent off hey guys stevie here and you know we all know how important a good night's rest is how important sleep is for sanity to be productive every day i certainly do and for the last several weeks, I've been so happy to try my brand new Helix mattress. Let me tell you, I have been getting some of the best sleep and waking up refreshed, although I could stay in bed for hours because this mattress is so comfortable to my body. I just know whoever I bring into my bed soon, is I'm not going to be able to get them out. I took the Helix sleep quiz and I was matched with the Midnight Mattress because I really wanted something that felt medium to firm as I tend to sleep on my side and my back all night. You know, the mattress that I had before was fine, but I'd had it way too long. And then I put this foam covering on top of it that worked for a while, but it got so mushy and I was waking up with aches and pains. The Helix Matrix is a major upgrade. No longer do I need an extra padding because it's built in and I'm getting some of the best sleep of my life. Not only is the mattress the best I've slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. Simply take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. Try out your new Helix mattress, see how your body adjusts, and if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return it for a full refund. 
Everybody is unique and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. Models with the more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions. Plus, enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash tags t-a-g-s and you know by supporting helix you're also allowing them to support tags podcast so go purchase your helix and thank me later for your best night's sleep with helix better sleep starts now again it's helixsleep.com forward slash tags t-a-g-s you guys this next story I'm so excited to, I don't know why, it just, I was reading about it during the weekend and I was like, I cannot wait to talk about this. This queer party host, so I think he's a comedian, we'll talk a little bit about him in a second, asked the internet to pay for his Airbnb damage after he had, and I'm, this is their words, filthy sex bender. So hear me out, we'll discuss, hold your commentary. A queer, non-binary club host, okay, so he's like a club host, begged the internet to help him cover his $500 Airbnb bill after they, they go by they, destroyed it in a, quote, filthy sex bender before then saying his request was a joke. Because you'll hear more about that in a second because he got a lot of flack for this. So then he said it was all a joke. Well, he, this guy, he's a host, goes by Filet Mignon, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's interesting for many reasons. I'll let people look at the picture. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com, but he goes by Filet Mignon. Jeremy and I enjoyed a lovely Filet Mignon over the weekend <laughs> that we devoured. Ooh. Not this guy, though. Filet Mignon had traveled to Chicago to host the Sanctum Festival, but ended up leaving their rental and whole in ruins. And after speaking to Queerty, Filet said, we're on a first name basis, quote, I work in political advocacy, but in my space, in my spare time, I'm a party mom and pleasure captain. Okay. Um, After the eventful weekend, Filet posted to his Instagram, dear community, as many of you know, this past weekend, I hosted Sanctum Chicago. The organizer of the event let me stay in an Airbnb, but after the festival was over, I begged the Airbnb owner who lived underneath the unit if I could stay another two nights and be, and he obliged. What happened over the next 40 hours was a sex bender so filthy and indulgent it made the devil himself blush. Ooh. I fucked on both beds, backed up onto the couch to be double penetrated, let my, oh, juice, let my juices drip off the dining room table, and got plowed by my sex machine on the expensive rug. While I thought I was taking necessary precautions to protect the property, I actually saturated every permeable sur- surface with coconut oil, silicon lube, and 17 loads from 11 different men. I'm reaching out in my time of need. I went to Chicago, partied like a rock star, trashed an Airbnb, and can't afford to settle the resulting debt. Anyone who can pitch in a hundred to get a dirty jockstrap from this event mailed to them as I haven't done my laundry. So he did that. And as you can imagine, he got tons of flack. He actually did really apparently set up a GoFundMe and got... <laughs> I believe $300 towards that cause. Well, a lot of people were not having it. And he went on to post a video where he said he was sorry, but not sorry. I'm so, so sorry that I'm funny and that the joke went right over your heads, causing you to slut shame me and denigrate me and really expose yourself as self-righteous, jealous prudes. If like us, you're not quite getting what... So he did go on to say that, but he did, I think, get some money over this. I don't... 
Cody, what are your thoughts on this? Because first of all, I don't know that I, I would never have gone on there and slut shamed uh-huh. him, but I do know when I've rented plenty in Airbnb, I also know coconut oil and silicon lube. I mean, that's just wrong. And even yeah. in your own house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And if you know what, if he did all of that, he got all the pleasure from that. He had a fabulous time. Why is he making other people pay for that? It's just ridiculous. It's asinine. I, if he invited me to the orgy, I might chip in for it. I remember one time I went to this sex party and I think I've told this story before and I broke a mirror and I was, oh, yes. absolu- <laughs> I was absolutely mortified and I offered to pay for it. But the, the person that was hosting the sex party didn't ask me for a dime. He said, you know what? It's a, it's what happens here. And I, I, I have to expect this type of thing to happen. So you're good to go. You, please have a great night. Don't even think twice about this. That's what this gentleman should have did. He had a bender and he he did the crime. Now he has to pay for the crime. So yeah, I mean, the whole thing to me is ludicrous. I think he really did probably set this up and told this story thinking he was being cute and funny and then acted like people were slut shaming him. I think it was just sloppy. No one really, ca- I think everybody was probably happy that good for you and talk about this stuff. It does remind me though, you know, when you rent an Airbnb, you kind of are bound. We rented a place, my sister and I, in Puerto Vallarta recently. And, oh, my God, we were laughing at the rules that they actually printed up in their binder. They oh. actually said things like no sexual activities in any of the public areas. And my sister no goes, like, way. did they really have to say that? <laughs> and they said some other things that were, like, cringeworthy and weird. But the one funny thing, and I can't believe I'm mentioning this, I... <laughs> While I was there staying at this Airbnb, sometimes I have like probably 12 white gray hairs. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm admitting this now <laughs> in my hair. <laughs> so a lot of people have said, oh, you should just let your hair go. I'm like, I have 12 hairs. It's, when I get 55 plus hairs, I'll maybe consider letting it go salt and pepper, but I have 12 Mm -hmm. hairs. So I buy this thing where I just kind of comb it in and I have to do it like every six weeks. Well, I was in Mexico and I did it. It does. So it it didn't fine. I didn't leave any stains except the white pillowcase the next day, because sometimes the color (laughs) is a little intense, was a little speckled. I washed it and it was still, and I was like panicked about that. And my sister said, oh, please, it's not that big of a deal. And those pillows were lame anyway. (laughs) It was totally fine. And we did not hear from them. They did not say anything about the few specks on that. I think they needed to change those pillowcases anyway. So I stand by that. But Jeremy, what are your thoughts? I mean, were people coming after him, slut shaming him, or was he just being sloppy? I think the whole thing sounds messy, and I think it's ridiculous that he asked for other people to support his habits. And <laughs> I think he should have been able to afford that cleaning fee on his own if he yep. was going to throw a party. And I just also think, like, if you're going to really go balls to the walls, buy some fucking plastic tarps. And right. put them all over everything. What? I mean, an expensive rug, you really don't have respect for like where you're staying <laughs> and then like people's belongings that are not yours. Jeremy? Yeah. Oh. oh, sorry. I lost that last. What was your last words? I said, I think it's just like no respect for people's belongings. And yeah. I just, I think it's like asinine and really ridiculous. And I'm not, I don't care about the sex part of it. It's just the fact that like you didn't think that you would ruin things with lube and like coconut oil. That's just like, I don't know. It doesn't take a smart person to figure that out. In yeah. 11 it, loads. 11 loads is a lot of loads. Okay. I think yeah. he said 17. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Let me check the work really quick, but I think you're right. 17 there. Yeah. You know, no, I don't think anybody was really slut shaming him. I think he, he, I think he thought he, first of all, I think he did this and no one's mad 
that he did this because he was he actually went on further to say you guys that had never have sex are all the ones that are coming after me and you're just jealous and that kind of stuff it's like no it's just g- great but you chose i think he thought he was being cute and funny right and he could probably pay for this i think some people actually chipped in some money but i think he thought this was going to go over in a way like oh my god you guys guess what i did one of those types of stories and everybody was like really and actually people were like ew it's just yeah there's so, nothing cutesy or funny about it no yeah. it's somebody's actual property and even well like, the yeah. other thing you have to think about is like so I put myself in their shoes. So say it was all his furniture and all his shit right. and someone rented it and did it at his. Do you think he would be knocking at someone's door for that 500? I'm sure he would. Right. Well, but when you own a rental property, you kind of have to expect maybe not a sex party of this magnitude, but you kind of have to expect that people are going to have sex at, at a rental property. Steve, that rental property that you went to in Puerto Rico, if they would have said no sex there, I would have been, can I have my money back, please? Can They I were need one step money? away from saying that in the binder <laughs> on the that table that we chose to read middle of the week. But by the way, I was sick during that week and I was, my sister was in the other room. So no, I wasn't even having sex. I <laughs> yeah, was so was celibate. Like, no. <laughs> but it was polar opposites of the two Airbnbs that I stayed in as compared to one he stayed in. But you, yes, wear and tear Cody, of course, you just yeah. factor that in. But stains, and I just also think, have you heard of Waterloo Bay? I mean, why are you bringing coconut oil and, sil- and we all know silicon just stains? And, and I don't know. I just think. No, it's too better much. for the bottom, and we have to take care of our bottoms. We had this discussion last week, but <laughs> we do. But to Jeremy's point, put it. We have to take care of our Airbnbs too. Thank but. you. <laughs> I'm into my design as much as I am into my bottoms. If you and- can't host at your own apartment, then there's your problem right there. <laughs> yeah, right, there. right. I think he's going to learn a lesson because it, he's he's gone viral, and I'm not sure he's gone viral for the right reasons. I'll post this on taxpodcast.com. You can weigh in. And let us know what you think because we always love to know what you think all right well it's time to give some advice and here we are at, with some reddit threads i can't wait for you to weigh in on some of these this one says is advice needed it comes from chemical underscore glove 183 asking dating an emotionally delicate partner bros in relationships oh, bros all right bros in relationships with very sensitive partners how do you do it my boyfriend and I are in our 30s and have been together for almost four years. Lately, we've been getting into arguments over little misunderstandings. I tend to be direct and rational in my communication. He tends to lean more with his emotions when communicating. Little conflicts turn into big conflicts, and I don't think it needs to be this way. I'll spare you the deets, but in general, any considerations for this type of relationship pairing? And Jeremy, I know you and I sitting on the couch that I'm looking at right now had many a conversations about so many things. And one of them was about a couple that have been together for a while and they're always in an argument. First mm-hmm. of all, how do you feel about couples that are always in an argument and we have to be around it? And how do you think he should handle this emotionally partner compared to his less emotional? I mean, I think any in any relationship, communication is key. And that's not just dating a significant other, but your friendships too. And I, so I think that knowing the person that he's dating or getting to know them a little bit better and easing them into the best way to have a serious conversation with them is like the most important. And obviously being around couples who fight all the time is extremely annoying and the couples are very inconsiderate of other people if it happens all the time that's uh, my opinion on that a hundred percent cody do you want to weigh in on this and since wow. you're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> do i ever so me and my boyfriend <laughs> joseph we we tend to argue up uh, a, a fair amount and it, it's not oh really i wasn't gonna I, say anything but, I know you, were, but I, you, you left it very open-ended and i really appreciate you for that thank you for being a good friend on this podcast today <laughs> <laughs> but it's it takes work to learn how to communicate effectively and 
I have told I have told myself and I have told him that we have to stop doing this because it is not like Jeremy said it's not fair to other people around us to have to hear this type of interaction between two people it's just it's not comfortable I don't enjoy it myself and I think that it's just it's just plain old inconsiderate so we are in the process of learning how to effectively communicate and you have to have your you have to stop it within yourself so this person needs to take it upon themselves to stop the argument before it ever happens in front of people and then maybe take a break take a walk away and make sure that your your partner also knows maybe have a safe word these are all things that i have considered so it's so funny that you bring this up because i am in the midst of making sure that this breakdown doesn't happen ever. Again. I love that though, <laughs> Cody. I think that every relationship has to go through changes and reflections and what's working for us and what's not working for us. And you guys are taking the time and it sounds like you are. And I love that because there's things that are going to pop up like that. What do you guys yeah. think of early on when you're, when it's gone past the first few dates and you know, you are really into somebody and, you're like you're now maybe spending the night so it's you're starting to date what do you think about the idea of talking about like hey by the way how do you deal where are you on the emotional spectrum when you know we're going to have a moment that we're not going to see eye to eye where are you on that spectrum if some if i did that with somebody now I could probably tell honestly that in the past, and I would say this probably to whoever I, I was getting more serious with, in the past I was zero to a hundred, immediately jumping to conclusions, getting jealous, having a conniption fit over the littlest of things, making something small, big, and I would admit that. But I would also tell them at my age now and where I'm at, and seriously, I would tell them th because I have done the work that now those things don't bother me anymore and I'm so much more relaxed and I would let them know, but I would also be say where I'm at with that. What do you think? Do you think that's realistic, Jeremy, to have that conversation just so I you could know. avoid? I don't know how realistic it is because I feel like the, the situations aren't always planable and you mm -hmm. can't, really predict how you're going to react based off of certain things so i do think that your mood is manageable by yourself but i don't know if you can realistically say this is how i'm gonna feel in this situation mm -hmm. until it actually happens and your dynamic with that other person and the interaction gives you the outcome you know what i mean i think I, it's it's very situational so it's something that i don't know so you could easily say like i'm a crier or uh, i i am super emotional but then not cry you know what i mean it, it i don't know if it's always gonna be so cut and dry I agree, but you can also talk about maybe your trajectory on how you have been in the past in other relationships and have that kind of deeper... But that um, may change based off well, of the person that you're point. with. Good yeah. point. Good yeah. point. I mean, the other thing, Cody, <laughs> that I do think sometimes a new relationship when you're... is kind of... And I hate to say this... It can be like a business transaction. I mean, you would never go into business with somebody if you knew they had, I'm just making this up, maybe they, maybe you needed their credit and they had bad credit. Like, are you uh -huh. really going to go? You'd want to go into business with something that added something to the table that maybe you didn't have. I'm not saying relationships are a transactional <laughs> appropriation that like that, but it mm -hmm. is you do have to approach it in some way. Like, is this something I'm, um, or is it just, you kind of have to throw everything up in the air and no one's perfect. And let's try this out. Well, I think that you should be looking for someone that makes you better at, at life in general. So I agree with you in that aspect. I want, I think that 
in the beginning of a relationship, it's not really realistic to say, oh, I react this way. In the beginning of a relationship, you are on your best behavior. I know I am. I am. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always, I haven't been in a, in a new relationship for about two years now, but I always am. I was a different person. I am Cody at his personal best. You're that AI I'm photo. AI, that I we want. Say, I'm AI <laughs> Cody. <laughs> a warrior. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that it's not real. Like Jeremy said, it's not realistic because of two different things. Because you don't know how you're going to react with this specific person. I personally am a very even keeled, calm person. When I am in the midst of arguing with Joe, I turn into the fucking Hulk. I <laughs> turn into somebody that I don't even really recognize. And but it's taking me, it's taking me time to assess how the triggers that he he sets off in me and how I can really overcome them. And also, I think that in the beginning of a relationship, like I said before, you, you're, you're not really 100% yourself, unfortunately. You're the best representation of yourself. And in summary, it sounds like most of our advice is you're never going to really know because things are going to pop up. Yes. You can maybe have some of these peripheral early conversations, but like we just said, things change, you change, he changes, they change. And so you, but it's, I do think it's never too late, like you, what you're doing, Cody, to reassess. You almost have to always I think a lot of people go into relationships like it's hunky dory and it's this, but you're always reassessing, pivoting, taking yeah, other things. I think and putting in the work to make yes. it grow to something better. The work. Yeah. Especially word. if you care for somebody a whole bunch, then that is when it's really, really worth it. And yeah. I have to remind myself of that too. So <laughs> <laughs> it's one it's I mean, relationships are beautiful and exciting and you get to share the world with this person. And I think that's why we're as a humanity, we're all drawn to that. We all want that on some level. But sometimes we gotta be reminded that it like Jeremy just said, it is work. And the work continues and has different periods of time that because we're always evolving and changing. It's a beautiful, complicated thing, concept. But and we're I don't I mean, human nature hasn't really gotten like the right mode yet, but it's worth it. I think in the end, when you're ready for it, when you're ready for it. So I agree. Well, we love giving advice for sex and relationships. And you know, you can always write in to us. We are here for you. We don't say we're experts, but we want to weigh in and we love giving it. So you can always DM us on our Instagram page at Tags Podcast, at Tags Podcast, or you can simply go to tagspodcast.com and contact us via that way and send us an email. Okay, lastly, I wanted you guys to weigh in on, to me, kind of cringeworthy, but it wasn't cringeworthy for many people. So in Iowa, the Iowa mayor posed nude with a chicken covering his penis in what's <laughs> called a dad body calendar. Okay, so essentially there is this calendar I can't believe calendars are still being printed, but right? the town of Creston, <laughs> Iowa has a population of about 8,000 people. And some of them were offended by the mayor's calendar by this business owner. She did it called dad bods. First of all, dad. Oh, okay. I'm not mad at it, but <laughs> whatever. And it's a small town. So she asked the mayor who doesn't look that bad in it. But in his picture, I think he's November, he's sitting there and this plate of ch chicken covering his dick. Well, she thinks the calendar creator thinks people are, are making way too much over this. I'm sorry. I don't know if I've gone prudish over it, but do you really want your mayor posing nude like this? For I think it was inappropriate. I don't know. Jeremy, what are your thoughts? I'm sure you don't care at all, Jeremy, but <laughs> uh, besides not caring, can you care right now and just give me a little bit of something? <laughs> I, I just don't say I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to. I would not want my mayor 
Or be able to take them seriously posing for a nude magazine. That's just like, I don't know. It's just odd. And then you bump into them around town and I don't know. It's just, it's the person that makes like important decisions for the town and the area. And I don't know. It's just something that it doesn't sound like the best professional decision to make. Okay, I mean, Cody, <laughs> at, do you think it's just a lack of, so there's 8,000 people in this community of Creston, Iowa. Obviously, they don't have PR people. He doesn't it's probably have a him. large <laughs> team of people around him saying, you know, is this really a good idea? Do you really need to, like, take off all your clothes and do this as the mayor? I mean, we look to our mayors to run our daily lives, and we hope that they really have our best interests for data, keeping us safe and all this stuff. I mean, what are your thoughts on this or are we being too prudish? Can I say, can I use Jeremy's quote and be like, I don't care. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so I think mayors are people too. They have sex. Who cares? I, I don't think it's a big deal. I think that I wouldn't lose respect for somebody just because they pose nude in a calendar. That would be like me saying that because I watch a certain porn star on TV that they, they, they don't have any acceptable or brilliant things to say. And I know that's not the case because people that do sex work, they have big bigger brains than me. Oh sometimes. my gosh, we're going to sex work? Now he's, an impor- now he's a porn star? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm like, if he's nude, who cares? He can probably still make some re- reliable decisions for the town. I don't know. I guess I'm a little old school in this way. I don't lose respect for him. Obviously, I, I wouldn't ultimately care that much. It would. It, it's a news story. I will, it will move on if I was in this Creston town of Iowa. On the other hand, I just think bad choice, bad, just, you know, bad choice making. Like, why did you take time out of your day to do this? Was it really that... I, in, in defense of the calendar maker, they do raise funds... And the money does go to a cause. I'm not sure. I can't remember what it was for. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com. You can weigh in and say, do you think it's worthy or not? Um, I don't know. I just think it's bad judgment. Like, I don't want to go there with my... I think certain professions, you shouldn't really go there. But I don't, don't want to see that. I don't want to see that, <laughs> Valerie Cherish. <laughs> um, did you guys watch White Lotus? No. Uh, oh my I'm God! Don't tell me. I'm, okay. I'm watching it tonight. Everybody I went out with last night because I was frantically trying to watch the finale, and it's really that good. Everybody. I hear it. it was but really everybody good. that I was going out with because we were trying to get ready to go out was like, "Don't tell me! Don't tell me!" But did you see it? And I'm like, I didn't see it, and it's worth it, and it's crazy, and it. I couldn't believe oh my God. they jammed in an hour, but it's crazy. All right, that's all I'm going to say. Anyways, okay. okay. Thank you so much. Always so much fun. Happy holidays. You can always follow my co-host. You can follow Jeremy on Instagram. And he has got some great stuff right now. You can see the Theory Mugler from a distance. Follow <laughs> him at J. Ross Lopez. At J. Ross Lopez. Follow Cody. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching. Or at Mr. Maurice. Mr. Maurice. Follow me. I'm at I am underscore Steve V or at tags podcast. Of course, go to tagspodcast.com for all the information. Thanks so much. We're live this Wednesday at nine o'clock for tags live. Join us. Yeah. Go to tagspodcast.com to get the live link. Thanks guys. So Thanks, much fun. Too. Always fun. Yeah. And in the meantime, continue having hot gay, gay sex. sex. <laughs> <laughs>